Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to Grace Church Shalom, our morning service. So glad to see that you have tuned in, every one of you. And we trust that this will be a great day and a great week ahead. And even you can tell it is Christmas and we are preparing for our Christmas celebration this month. Hallelujah. Praise God. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you for coming in, uh, tuning in through our website, Grace Church Alam website, our, the YouTube. You can watch the service online through Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, even after the service. Praise God. And we thank you for those of us, and you who have come and joined us for our virtual conference triumphant conference oh, it was such a great time we had it just went on went by too fast too quickly I'm so glad to see all of you tune tuning up for those days it was truly fantastic those meetings really lifted us lifted our faith up and put us on the right path hallelujah in christ we are victorious in christ hallelujah and this season of celebration of christmas we want to remember we are celebrating because of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior came to us. So without further ado this morning, we are going to arise to our feet and let us worship our Lord together with love and enthusiasm. God bless our service. Shall we arise? Take it away, worship team. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful. Tell it all. 
God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go and go, say go, go tell it on the
together for my good Cause you made all things work together for my good And you made all things work together for my good Will you stay the same There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me. Sure.
day let incense arise Day and night, night and day let incense arise Day and night, night and day let incense arise Day and night, night and day let incense arise Worship. I trust that you had a great time in the presence of the Lord. Thank you again to the worship team and media for making this possible for us. What a joy it is to worship God together. Uh, my announcement for today is Kids Alive right after the service. Don't forget to tune in with your children at 12 noon. I want to say thank you to all teachers and, and our parents, mummies, you are faithfully helping your children get online and get involved in this kids session. It's so good, so good that the children are able to gather together to hear God's word and to learn from Him during this, especially during this difficult time. Even though we cannot gather together physically, kids are able to have their sessions together with their friends and their teachers. Thank you for tuning in to Kids Alive. Hallelujah. And also coming up, a very, very good and a fun time, Virtual Kids Camp 2020. Hallelujah. It's a kids camp like never before. It's a virtual camp and we want all children, parents, get your kids involved. The dates are 18, 19 and 20th of December. 18 and 19 will be from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., okay? Remember that on the 18th and the 19th of December is Saturday. Friday and Saturday, it will be from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. for your children to attend this fun camp time together. Games and, pl and, and uh, play and fun and quizzes, I suppose. Beautiful things, all right? So kids, make sure you join this special time. On the 20th of December, Sunday morning, again at 12 noon, will be your kids' Christmas party. Yeah, children, you are not exempt from Christmas party. Even though we are at home and we cannot get together physically in church, you still have your Zoom Christmas party. All right, so kids, get excited. Get excited. All right, so that is the, the announcements for you. For those of you 
and we want to thank you for your faithful contribution and your faithful support towards our ministry, towards our missions, and towards our uh, chicken home. Right? We thank you. Thank you for all your giving and for your faithfulness because you, you are giving to the kingdom of God and for the extension of the Lord's kingdom. We want to thank you. Uh, praise God for your faithfulness. All right? So those of you who are wanting to give, our account is Grace Assembly of God, Sha'alam, 163,002381 at Afin Bank. Thank you very much. Thank you for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. It's easy. Online giving is easy. Hallelujah. We want to thank you. And without further ado, without further ado, let me welcome our speaker for this Sunday morning. I wanted to say guest speaker. Our very own Reverend David Ramaya. What a great privilege God has given to us where we can come into his presence with praise, into his presence with worship. He has given us that opening where we can come into the throne room of God and just worship him. I'm sure you have been tremendously blessed. Every song that, that we sing to the Lord, I'm so grateful that there are people who write songs for us to express our heartfelt gratitude to God and how we really feel about Him. It's good to express ourselves totally. See, God did not just want, want us to separate spirit, soul, and body. He wants us to function as one. And it's great to allow our bodies to be involved, our emotions, you know, our whole, just to get involved in worship is such a tremendous blessing and it's such a tremendous privilege. Once again, welcome to our first service for the month of December. I'm sure we are all looking forward to enjoy this month in spite of all that's happening. I'm sure you had a great time during the conference uh, helping us to understand that we are triumphant, not we are going to be, we are already triumphant. We've got something that the world does not have. We have Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. We've got brothers and sisters to encourage us in the faith. We've got the Word of God to build us up in our most holy faith. So it's tremendous to be a child of God. It's a tremendous privilege, isn't it? And so I trust that you will uh, enjoy just being a believer and, and being real and being uh, uh, practical in the way we live. Letting everybody know, hey, listen, in spite of it all, we've got good news for you. And the good news is Jesus can help us through in spite of all that we are going through. Amen. So I trust that you have been uh, blessed and you have been enjoying each session that we have been giving to you. This morning, I'd like to continue in, on a series with you. But uh, since it's the first Sunday of Christmas and every month of December I try to bring a message uh, about Christmas or that which is related towards Christmas. So today I wanted to talk to you uh, about someone in the Bible and I was asking Pastor Lifan, you know, uh, do you know who this person is? Because I've been talking to you about prayer and uh, in my series on prayer I started by talking about praying boldly uh, uh, Caleb's daughter coming to him and asking boldly for the mountain, uh, for a better place, asking for streams, coming boldly into the throne of God and praying. And then I talked about how we ought to pray through our weakness. And then I went into praying through uh, our struggling faith, uh, praying through challenging times, you know, and, and I began to mention all these things. Now, why do I speak so much about prayer? See, in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, it says, Jesus began to teach them a parable to the effect that man should pray always. That's the, that's the desire of the heart of God. Not so that we can be found to be spiritual, you know, and, and praying because it's a spiritual thing to do, because prayer opens the doors of heaven and pours out upon us blessings that we cannot even imagine. God is able to do, remember Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly abundantly above all that we could, what? Ask, imagine. So there, there, there is that asking part. Now, if you're going through a, 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 a anxiety, you're going through uh, you know, worry about your, your present situation or our present situation, what's happening in the country, jobs, children, finances, uh, all these things. If we are worrying about it, what's the answer? Well, the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, do not be anxious over anything, but by what? Prayer and supplication. So the answer to worry and anxiety is what? Prayer. 
Now, again, if you read James chapter 4, verse 2 and verse 3, it says, we do not have because we ask not. So, uh, getting rid of anxiety, prayer. Having the provision of God in spite of there being a loss of jobs and things like that. How does the provision come in? We have not because we ask not. And then he, James also says this in James chapter 5 and verse 3. Is there any among you who is suffering? Are you going through pain? Are you going through sickness? What's the answer? Call the elders. Pray. Let him pray. If I want the presence of God to be near because I feel so at a loss, Psalm 145 and verse 18 says this, The Lord is near to those who call upon Him. So everything comes down to this thing called prayer. So as I spoke to you, you know, about praying through our weakness, praying through our uh, struggling faith, praying through challenging times, praying through our fears, uh, what I'd like to do today is combine it all and, and, uh, and you find all these four things in the life of someone around the time of Christmas. If I were to ask you who that person is, would you know who that is? All right, just guessing game. But anyway, it's found in the Gospel of Luke and chapter 1. talks about the very first person that was introduced, uh, who, who was the father of John the Baptist. His name was Zechariah. And uh, I'd like to use Zechariah. And show you how this man had all these things that we have been talking about wrapped up in his life. So I want us to go to Luke chapter 1. And I'm just going to read. It's actually from verses 5 through verse 25. But I'm going to read you just verse 13 to tell you that he was a praying man. Because the angel comes to him with a message. And the angel says this in verse 13. I have come to tell you that your prayer for a child has been answered. Now think about that for a while. The angel is sent to come to this man, Zechariah, and to tell him, I have come, I am sent from the presence of God to tell you that your prayer for a child has been answered. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, if we have this kind of an assurance, I have come to assure you, I've come to tell you, I want to assure you, God has not only heard, I've come to tell you that your prayer has been answered. Don't we all like that kind of a news? All right, we all are waiting for that kind of news, right? All right, now let's let's go into Zechariah's life. I want you to understand that first of all, Je Zechariah uh, was uh, praying in spite of, and that's the title of my message, pray in spite of right? Pray in spite of. I talked to you about challenging times. Well, Zechariah prayed in spite of challenging times. In verse 5, it tells us that this was during the reign of King Herod, the great over Judea. There was a Jewish priest named Zechariah who served in the temple, you know, and that's what verse 5 tells us. Now, I want us to understand that, Ze that Herod the Great was not a really great person as far as personality was concerned. He was great because he was a great builder. And how many of you know during those times, they didn't have the kind of technology we have to build the kind of buildings we build. And yet their buildings were huge. It was humongous. Those of you who have, have seen the temple or have seen the walls of Jerusalem, you would know that those stones are huge. I mean, they are humongous, humongous stones that were used to build the temple or that were used to build the city huge. Now, this required a lot, a lot of slaves, a lot of people uh, to work on these things. And so Herod would have been a very, very hard taskmaster. And he was not a person that was really liked by the people because he was actually in, in uh, consolidating uh, with the Roman Empire to make sure that they ruled over Israel well. So he was more of a friend of Rome than a friend of the people of Israel. Now, the reason why he built the Temple of Jerusalem was to get the Jews on his side. But actually, Herod himself was, uh, was an Edomite. He was not really a Jew. But he converted to Judaism in order to win the hearts of the people. And he became the king. He was a very good friend of Julius Caesar. And... Uh, uh, 
And uh, so, you know, the people really didn't like him at all. He ruled with an iron fist. Not only did he rule with an iron fist, they were also uh, living under the time of the Romans. And the Romans were really hard tusk masters. We all know that. I mean, there were crucifixions that were happening all day long. Somebody was being crucified outside of the cities to, to just, you know, bring fear into the hearts of the people. They didn't rule the people with love. They ruled the people with complete fear. It made them fear them. So it was during these challenging times that Zechariah began to really seek God and he was asking for something very personal. Now, personally, also, it was very challenging for him because the Bible says, you know, uh, verse uh, 6 and verse 7, it says that they, he, him and his wife, they were both lovers of God. Now, listen to this. I want you to listen very carefully to this one. They were both lovers of God, living virtuously and following the commandments of the Lord fully following the commandments of the Lord fully. They were childless since Elizabeth was barren and they were both quite old by now. So it was quite challenging for them personally. I mean, think about this. They, they love God totally, obeyed the commandments of God, and yet Zechariah himself, a priest, not having an answer to his prayer. Prayer was delayed to a very great extent. They prayed, they waited, but nothing happened. And yet, in spite of it, it seems like the angel was saying when he said, you know, your prayer for a child has been answered. It's like their whole life was basically still clinging on and believing in spite of the challenges that they faced. And I want us to understand that, you know, in spite of all the challenges that you and I are going through, we need to keep on praying and keep on believing and keep on trusting God. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I've heard people say this, what's the point of talking to pastor, you know, or pastor, pastor life one? Uh, the only thing they will tell you to do is pray. Yes, yes. The only thing we will tell you to do is pray. Why? Because prayer opens possibilities we, uh, that are beyond the natural. It moves from the finite to the infinite. It moves out of the kingdom of the natural realm to the kingdom of God. So why not pray when God promises so many things to us? Why not pray? Why not pray? So he prayed in spite of challenging times. I spoke to you about praying through your fears. Well, Zechariah prayed in spite of his fears. That's my second point. Verse 11 through verse 13, it says this, All at once the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing just to the right side of the altar. Zechariah was startled and overwhelmed with fear overwhelmed with fear, but the angel reassured him, saying, don't be afraid, Zacharias, God is showing grace to you. In spite of fear, Zechariah was still considered to be a praying man. If there's one thing that marks him out in this gospel, it's that he was a praying man. He was a priest, now, he could have just said, you know, all right, never mind, you know, we've never got answers to prayer. Let me just go and do my duty in the temple of God. But in, he, he's the only man that's marked out. I mean, there, there were other priests as well, but Zechariah was marked out because the thing that marked him out was in spite of the things that he was going through, he still prayed. He prayed in spite of his fears. So, we will, as I said before, we will face bouts of fear. Every challenge we have, we will have bouts of fear, all right? But in spite of it, I want us to keep believing that God is on our side. I'm sure you have heard the many sermons, many pe pe uh, preachers talking about the number of fear knots in the Bible. Why does God keep saying that again and again? Now, the very first thing that came out uh, of, of the mouth of uh, Adam is, I heard the voice of God, we were afraid, and we began to hide. We were afraid. Being afraid of God 
is not really a good thing. Now, the fear of God is a different thing where we have complete reverence for him. We recognize that he is God Almighty, our creator, and we honor him as such. That's a different thing. But to be afraid of him where we stay away from him is wrong. But to allow the fears of things around us to so capture our hearts that we are uh, driven away from God is wrong. I'm so afraid, you know, and, and we do nothing about it. We just give in to our fears. When I am afraid, I will trust the Lord, David said. No wonder he went through some really trying times, uh, very difficult times, wondering when Saul would kill him. He was running for his life. His own son came after him. I mean, can you imagine the kind of fears uh, these guys had? Yet in spite of it all, they kept on praying. Let me also say uh, this this morning, he was praying, he prayed in spite of his struggling faith, in spite of his struggling faith. You know, prayer is like, you know, I, I really believe God, all right? I talked about the man who, who said, help my unbelief, the un, uh, struggling faith. But prayer, the reason we pray is we actually believe God, and yet at the same time, we don't really believe uh, that anything good is going to come about it. That's why we don't give ourselves to real serious prayer. We can say prayers. Don't forget to say your prayers <laughs> kind of thing. But we don't pray like we ought to pray because there, there is a kind of a conflict that's going on inside of us, sometimes subconsciously. We don't even realize it. And, and we just say a prayer. Uh, and, and we feel, well, I, I've said a prayer. We just talk to God and, and we don't expect anything powerful to happen. We don't expect an angelic visitation. But what if God has such a visitation planned for you? Maybe not an angelic visitation, but a, a kind of an assurance. And I'll talk about that in just a few moments. But what, what if God has got something better planned out for you? What if you just went through it? What if you and I, you know, just battled through this, this struggling thing that we have on the inside? Listen to what Zechariah said in verse 18. Zechariah answered the angel, how do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man and my wife is too old to give me a child. What sign can you give me to prove that this will happen? How can I believe this? How can I believe this? And it, it's too good to be true, isn't it? When we talk to you, we, we kind of share different things and promises, and we encourage you, and we want you to, to just get in there and continue to believe God. And uh, we, we give you the promises from the Word of God. Now, listen, this is not something I promise you. If I want to promise you things, then... You can doubt me. You can begin to say, ah, forget it. It's, this guy will never be able to get it done. And, and possibly true. I, I may not be able to fulfill some of the promises that, that I'd really like to keep. It's, I thank God I, I don't make such promises. But I, I assure you on the word of God, when God makes a promise, have I said it and will not, I not bring it to pass? He said. Is my word not good enough? If I send my word, will it return unto me void? If I send a promise, will it come back to me empty? When I send the rain, it, it goes for a purpose. It goes to water the ground so that it can produce crop. Don't you think that my word is even more powerful? If I said to you, I have looked after the sparrows and I've looked after the lilies of the field, don't you think I would also look after you, you of little faith? He never say you who are doubters. He says you've got little faith. So what's he want to do? He wants us to grow in our faith, to break through and really believe and cling on to God in spite of our struggling faith. Of course, Zechariah also prayed through his weakness. We talked about praying through our weakness in spite of his weakness. This is his thing. I am old. Now, that was not the only battle that Zechariah had about being old. Uh, he was one of 18,000 priests at that time. 18,000 priests were serving. 
So now he comes to the temple. It's like every day he would be looking after other things, you know, help out wherever he could help out. But he could not fulfill his number one responsibility, which was to come in and light the altar or, or give the incense, you know, light the, the, the candle stand. That, that was now his, that was his job. But he could only do it like once in a lifetime. Think about that. Call to do it once in a lifetime. I'm sure I've, I've shared this uh, uh, illustration with you. Talk about, you know, where I went and watched this orchestra playing. And, and there is this guy right in the corner and, and the music is going on and, and the, the conductor is conducting and the violins and the cellos and, and, and the tims and boom, 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 boom. And everything is going on and, and the trumpets and all these things. And then, you know, as it goes on and then finally in one part, there is this guy at the side who's got a little symbol kind of thing. And then he's got a little thing in his hand and he goes, ding, that's all. And every now and again, the music will go and then it was his turn to, that was his only duty. But the man sat there dressed up in all his, you know, tuxedo and everything, looked so grand. That was his duty. He still clung, clung on to his duty. Now here is this guy. I mean, he's thinking like, who am I? I mean, the battle that would go on in his own heart. I, I, I'm called to serve God, but I can only serve him once in a while. And I want you also to understand when he said, I am old, the average lifespan of a person during the time of Jesus was 40 years. People didn't live that long. And, uh, you know, of course, when he's, he's already, and you could only enter the priesthood from the time, uh, you know, enter the priesthood from 30 years old, and you could serve right until you are about 50 years old. So Zechariah has already passed the stage of over 40. He's almost retirement age. Okay, so that is one of the things he's beginning to think, how can this thing be? I, you know, I, I don't qualify. He's now, he had been praying even through that weakness that he had. He felt that I am too old, too weak to even have a child. My wife is also barren. And that's the, the thing, struggling to get it done, you know, struggling to get it done. I mean, it's, it, 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 it is not possible at all. It is not possible at all. Struggling through my weakness. So praying in spite of my weakness, praying in spite of the challenges, praying in spite of my fears, praying in spite of my struggling faith, praying in spite of my weakness. Now, the angel comes to him and the angel says, God has heard your prayer. Not only that, I've come to tell you, I've come to tell you, reassure you, by saying, don't be afraid now, Zacharias, this is what I want to tell you, that your prayer for a child has been answered. What am I trying to say? One of the major things is when we are praying, try not to put too many eggs in one basket. Zacharias' whole life was, although he served God, he had one desire in his heart, and that desire was, I want to have a child. And that is the thing that moved him and made him become, separated him from all the 18,000 priests and made him a man of prayer, where an angel would come to him, to him. Because he was so specific and so serious about what he wanted. My question to you is, what have you focused upon? Our focus in prayer must be like the focus uh, of a surgeon's laser as he goes in. He's interested in attacking one particular thing. One thing, David said, have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after. The woman at the well when Jesus began to tell him, tell her about, you know, you, you, the husband that you have now is not your husband. The man that you're living with is not your husband. And uh, my goodness, the lady goes back to Samaria, the town of Samaria. She tells the people, he told me everything. So there was basically one thing that consumed her heart. She was looking for love in all the wrong places, so to speak. That was the thing that was consuming her heart. And Jesus went all the way out 
uh, of his regular trip, his journey, go to Samaria in the hot noonday sun, sit at the well and wait for that one woman because there was one thing that troubled her. And if he dealt with that one thing, he could have talked about other things as well, but he just spoke of that one thing that was really the core issue in her heart. The man at the gate, beautiful. He's sitting there and he's begging. But the Bible says the moment Peter and John lift him up, it says his ankle bones receive strength. There was one thing that was wrong with him, his ankle. And that one thing was the thing that caused him to become a beggar. I'm just asking you this morning as you begin to listen to this message, get a hold of the one thing you desire God to answer. Make it become the main burden of your heart. Listen, you don't have to pray for so many things. The burden of Elijah's heart was the sin of the people of Israel. They had turned away from God. And so he's saying, man, they turned away so badly, God, you've got to do something. I just pray. It says he prayed that it would not rain. And then he prayed again that it would rain. There was something specific. And, and that's what I want to challenge you as we begin to come to the close of this year and begin the starting of a new year. Ask yourself, what is the most important thing? What is the thing that you, that you value the most or that you want to see God invade and do something, something? Keep that as the number one thing. Make it a point to even if you have to fast and pray, but, uh, you know, I'm not calling you to go into a season of fasting and pray, but make that the number one thing of your life. Why? Was Hannah heard and produced not just a son, she got a prophet, the first prophet of Israel. Came about because there was one woman who was so troubled about not having a son. That one thing must drive us. What is that one thing for you? All right? That's the thing you've got to ask yourself. And, and once you realize that that is the thing and you keep on praying, I assure you, you're going to have maybe not an angelic visitation, but I thank God we've got someone greater than an angel, and that is the Holy Spirit. You know, the early Methodists used to have their prayer meetings, and many times when they begin to pray, they would call it getting a hold of God. And it's like, God, I will not let you go until you answer this prayer. And then when they got the answer, they would be praying and praying. Some of them would pray for days, you know, of course, not throughout the day. But every time they come to the prayer meeting, that's what they would pray for. That's what the brother would pray for. That's what the sister would pray for. God, they were taught to pray like that. One thing, God, I'm asking you for this one thing. And then when it was done, they would stand up and say, it is done. It is done. They would hear the voice of the Holy Spirit inside of them saying, God has answered your prayer for whatever it is. I want that same thing to happen for you. I want it to happen in my own heart. I thank God several times. God has just assured me it's all right. You're going to have the answer. Your answer shall come. It's coming or it's going to happen. Your answer shall come. Now, of course, when the angel said to him, you know, God has answered your prayer. She didn't immediately get nine months pregnant. They went through a whole time. And then eventually they had a child. And he was John, whom we call the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. What a blessing. It all began when somebody prayed in spite of. So this morning, I want to challenge you to just believe God and trust that in spite of all that you're going through, in spite of all that you're going through, whether it be challenging times or the fears that you have, anxiety, anxious moments, how your faith is battling, you're just struggling, you say, Go, Pastor, I just don't have faith. It doesn't matter. Just keep on praying. Keep on praying. And how weak you feel, you feel like you don't qualify. Listen, man, everybody, everybody qualifies. You know why I know everybody qualifies? Because Jesus shed his blood for the world. For the world not just for some individual. God gave his son for the world. Jesus died for the world. Everyone qualifies based on the finished work of Calvary. That's why we end our service by partaking of communion this morning. As we come around the table, the table in your family, we begin to say, Lord, I thank you. You did it all for me. I qualify.
I qualify to come into your presence and to seek your face and to, to just believe that you will say in my heart, I have heard and answered your prayer. Speak, O oh Lord, into my heart based upon the finished work of Calvary. So this morning, I'd like you to go ahead and take that bread and hold it in your hand together with me as we begin to partake of it. I'm going to take a piece of bread and, and recognizing that this is the body of Christ, then we also have the cup which we will take and hold it before the Lord. And we say, Lord, here it is. Here it is, Father, because of what your son has done, I qualify. I may feel like I'm the worst of the lot, but yet, Lord, I qualify. You know my heart does not have the kind of faith that I would love to have. But like Zechariah, Lord, in spite of all that I'm feeling on the inside, I come. Times are challenging. Many things are happening around us, which makes it very difficult. But in spite of that, Father, I come to you based on what Jesus has done. Oh, how we love Jesus. Had he not done this, none of us qualify. None of us would be able to pray, but thank him for what he has done for us through the cross. So let's take the bread together. Let me just pray as we begin to partake of it. Father, I am so grateful for every brother and sister that I can call brother and sister because you have washed us all by the blood of the Lamb and brought us into the family of God. We stand on the first Sunday of December, anticipating that final time where we will begin to celebrate the coming of God into our world. All this was done because God so loved the world. Thank you for that word. It does not just say God loved the world, it says so loved the world. So I ask right now, Father, that you would honor the sacrifice of your son by receiving all your children into your presence. You see the hearts cry, you see the pain, you see the strugglings that they are going through, how they battle through faith, and, and sometimes they feel that they just don't have enough of it to touch your throne. But oh God, when we don't have faith, you abide faithful. You cannot deny yourself. Based on what your son has done, I ask now that you would receive every one of your children as we partake of this, Lord, Jesus himself said, if you do not partake of this, you, are, you have none of me. And so, Lord, we partake of it because we belong to him completely. Bless now the bread as we partake of it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the healing that comes, the broken relationship that we had before Jesus came into this world. There is healing through the broken body of Christ. We thank you for that healing. Now, Father, I ask that you would bless the cup as we partake of it. This brings about complete forgiveness of all of our sins. All of our sins, all of our sins. We thank you that there is forgiveness through the blood of the Lamb. Bless now the cup as we partake of it in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you so much for loving each one of us. Thank you, Lord. I pray that prayer will become our number one priority. Rising early in the day, finishing the whole day, Lord, let it be by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving so that the peace of God that passes all understanding can govern our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lifting your hands before the Lord right now, Father, I ask that you would so bless your people and keep them, cause your face to shine upon them, be gracious unto them. Father, lift up your countenance upon them, give them peace in all their homes, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the blessed communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful December. Enjoy this whole month. Let the spirit of the Christ of Christmas. So fill each one of your hearts and have a great week this week. Be blessed. If you have any uh, needs that, that we could pray for you, please let us know so that we can join you in prayer. All right? Call us up. Text us, whatever it may be. We are here to be by your side. Again, I want to say thank you for all those who have been faithfully giving throughout the entire month and throughout the entire season of, of this COVID. We've not been able to meet, but yet your giving has helped us do so many things. We are so grateful to you. I want to say thank you. So have a great week. Have a great December. 
this entire month. God bless you.